This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Our goal with our videos is to empower you to be able to do the repairs on your own and save a whole lot of money and also get that great feeling of having fixed it by yourself. Today we have a Bosch dishwasher that is not filling enough with water and we're going to be replacing the fill valve. So it's pretty easy to do and here's a link to the fill valve from Amazon. Pretty cheap. We'll put a link in the description below. Right. To do it, it's really easy. It'll just take you a few minutes. We're going to get underneath the sink and we're going to unplug it and then we're also going to turn off the water supply. So the water supply is coming out of the wall there. We're going to turn this valve 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. That's going to stop all the water going into the dishwasher. On some of those valves, instead of 90 degrees, you just keep turning to the right as far as it'll go. So we're going to open it up and when we try to run it, we notice not very much water comes in. Just about a, maybe just half an inch, but the water should come all the way up to the top of this round filter handle. And we'll show you at the, uh, later in the video, once we replace the valve, that it does. But we have to change out that valve. We're going to use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove these two little screws from the lower panel. And that's going to allow us to take off this what we call the kick panel on the front. And that's going to get you right to that fill valve, so very little disassembly. Some videos, they have you take off the front panel, but you really don't have to. You can just open the door and pull it towards you, and it creates a lot of room. So we got to take off this hose here. Again, we're going to make sure that we have the water supply turned off. So we have to make sure it's turned 90 degrees to the hose, just like that. That cuts off the water. That's water on, that's water off. We got it unplugged. We're going to use a pair of pliers to go lefty-loosey to loosen it. I sped up the camera a little bit here, but I'm using my fingers now to unloosen it. And then there's a brass elbow here. I'm going to use a pair of vice grips to grab it and turn to the left, lefty-loosey, to get that off. You can also do this later, but it's kind of a nice time to do it because it's held in there so securely by two screws that it allows you to more easily get this uh, brass elbow off. And we're going to use a Torx 15 bit to take out two screws here that are holding the fill valve assembly to the plastic frame. So just zip those out. And then we can take out the electrical connector that's behind the fill valve that's bringing power to the fill valve. It's just a modular connector. We just reach back there and we pull it off. You don't have to pinch anything. You just grab it and pull it. So I'm reaching back with my right hand. I'm going to pull it toward the back of the dishwasher and that's going to pull it off of the fill valve. And now I can, there's the little connector. Now I can take the fill valve and I can just wiggle it out of its little hole that it's in here. I turn it a little bit to the right, pull it out, and there's a hose connected to it, and I want to grab my pair of pliers and get the hose clamp and pinch it and move it toward the back by about two inches. Now I can grab that hose and the fill valve and I can twist and pull to get that fill valve to come loose. There we go. So that's, that's the little screen inside that sometimes traps particulate matter that can clog it up. But usually it's just good to replace these fill valves. They last about four to five years. They're pretty cheap. So to replace it, I'll put some Teflon tape on the threads of the brass elbow. It has uh, little threads on one end and, and um, a wider aperture threads on the other end. So we want to only do it on the on the wider one because that's the one that's going to go into the fill valve. The one where you have the hose go on to it, um, that's a compression fitting and you don't need to have that Teflon tape. I'm just getting some of the old tape off the old one. And then I'll, I'll wrap around maybe four times around with the Teflon tape to make a nice watertight connection. And then I'll go ahead and spin that into the new fill valve. So this is again what the fill valve looks like and we'll put a link down there for you 
in the description. So I'm just wrapping that around the threads. The yellow one here is actually for pipe. Uh, the one that's usually used is uh, the Teflon tape is uh, blue, but this pipe one will work also. So I'm just going to spin that in. And then I'll grab a wrench. I sometimes use pliers or vice grips to turn it even tighter so it's a really tight water connection. So I turned it so that it lines up with this green solenoid. They're both pointing the same direction. I'm going to put the tube back on. That brings water to the dishwasher. And then I'm going to grab that hose clamp and pinch it and pull it toward me to help <clears throat> make sure that that hose is on with a nice watertight connection. Now I'm just going to wiggle that back into its assembly, its housing, and I'll go ahead and add those two uh, 15, Torx 15 screws back in. I'm going to reach in now with my right hand and grab that um, electrical connector and push it back into the fill valve. It's a modular connector so it can only go in one way. So if you're having trouble just wiggle it around until it feels like it'll go in and make sure it goes in until it basically clicks so it won't go any further. Let's give you a close-up of that. Now we're going to take the hose and we're going to use, sped up the camera a little bit, we're going to just put it on by finger tension and then we'll take our pliers and spin it a few more times righty-tighty. And we're essentially done at this point. It doesn't take very long. These are really good dishwashers, but the uh, fill valves, again, four or five years later, they just either won't close all the way, they stay open, or they won't open far enough and let enough water come in. So we're going to turn the valve back on underneath the sink. There we go. And we'll plug it in. Close the door, we'll press power, we'll press start. We gotta wait a little bit. These newer Bosch dishwashers take a little while for the fill valve to activate. When you start a dishwasher, first thing it'll do is it'll drain. I'm activating the drain now by pressing for three seconds on the start button. And that's just going to drain out any water that might have still been in there. Just a good way to, to start off the cycle. Listening to the water flowing through this thing, which is called the air gap. It's good to do a little check of that air gap anytime you work on the dishwasher to make sure it's not clogged. So I can hear it, I can hear the drain spinning, but it sounds like something's maybe spinning around it with that drain impeller took off the top of this and I found there's a little fish bone in there. So just good to check that, get that, that kind of crud out of there because it can clog things up and make it hard for the dishwasher to drain. But that that's not really the problem. What we're hearing is something down in the impeller that's rattling around, probably a little piece of ceramic or glass. So we're going to get that out of there too. Pretty easy to do. We'll press that uh, drain button for three seconds to make sure all the water gets drained out. <clears throat> so now I can feel the fill, the fill valve is vibrating so I know that it's working, it's letting water come in. I'm just going to do a little test to see how high the water gets. It's 
That water level looks really good. It's as high as the top of that round filter handle. That's exactly where it should be, so that's perfect. So the new fill valve did the trick. We're going to put that <coughs> kick panel back on. Sped up the camera a little bit. Put those screws back in. There we go. Just going to check these up, the upper spray arm, make sure these holes are all nice and clear. There's nothing caught in them. Looks great. Take out the bottom one. Same thing, all these jets, so these holes look really good. So this dishwasher is going to do great. Still have kind of that funny uh, crackling sound though down here in the drain assembly, so I'm going to take a look. I'm going to pry back on this impeller cover, move it toward the back of the dishwasher, and then pull it out. And then I'm going to use a turkey baster to remove the about half a cup of water that's in there. That half a cup of water being in there is normal. That's a totally normal condition. It's called a wet sump on the meat on the uh, Bosch dishwasher so we're just gonna get all the water out of there and then when you start moving the impeller around sometimes you can see a little piece of glass or ceramic I found a little piece of glass in there and you can pull it out with a pair of <clears throat> needle nose pliers or tweezers so now when I move the impeller with the screwdriver, it moves very freely. It's not rubbing against anything. This is just a good thing to check when you're doing your dishwasher repair. I'm going to put the impeller cover back in. So I'll slide it in first. And then I'm going to use a standard head screwdriver to push in on this tab. Push down as I push the top part of it toward me, toward the front of the dishwasher. I want it to click into place. Very important. And I'll put the filter assembly back in. I'll turn it till it locks, till the blue arrows line up. I'll put the lower spray on back in and the lower basket. And we are done. We have a functioning drain now that doesn't rattle. We have good water flow coming in. And this dishwasher is basically like brand new again. The circulation pump sounds really good. So I can hear the water is filled. I hear the circulation pump turning. And then usually the more water will fill in. I can hear more water filling in. And then there'll be a little bit more of a circulation pump kicking the water around. Yeah, we see water flowing all over the place now. That's really good. That's exactly what we want to see. So hopefully this will help you to get your Bosch dishwasher working good again. Really appreciate you watching and hope we can send some more videos to you soon. Thanks so much for watching our video. We really appreciate your support. And when you get a chance, please press the subscribe button below so you can be subscribed and also the notification bell so we can send you more videos about appliance repair. Please also give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you really liked the video and it really helped you, please press this new applaud button and you can show your support and also get a nice clapping hands for your video. Thanks again.